The scripture reading today comes from Genesis chapter 18, verses 1 through 15. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mam, as he sat at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day. He looked up and saw three men standing near him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent entrance to meet them and bowed down to the ground. He said, my Lord, if I find favor with you, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be bought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. Let me bring a little bread that you may refresh yourselves. And after that, you may pass on since you have come to your servant. So they said, do as you have said. And Abraham hastened into the tent to Sarah and said, make ready quick three measures of choice flour. The herd and took calf tender and good and gave it to the servant who hastened to prepare it. Then he took curds and milk and the calf that he had prepared and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, where is your wife, Sarah? And he said, there in the tent. Then one said, I will surely return to you in due season and your wife shall have a son. And Sarah was listening at the tent entrance behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, advanced in age. It had ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. So Sarah laughed to herself saying, after I have grown old and my husband is old, shall I have pleasure? The Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh and say, shall I indeed bear a child now that I am old? Is anything too wonderful for the Lord? At the set time, I will return to you in due season and Sarah shall have a son. But Sarah denied saying, I did not laugh for she was afraid. He said, oh yes, you did laugh. I'd like to use for a sermonic theme this morning, laughter is good. Laughter is good. We are in a series called Good Times, and this is our second Sunday. And the focus this Sunday is laughter is good. As a young adult fresh out of graduate school, I would take improvement classes. I took a class on sign language. I signed up for a jazz class with Gus Giordano. They had advanced classes for their professional dancers, but they had these classes for amateur dancers, people who that like to dance, but really hadn't spent a lot of time training as dancers. The class would last about 50 minutes. And the class was divided into three sections. First, we would come in and we'd do warm-up exercise. And then we would do exercises that took us across the floor. And then at the end, the part that really got me excited was we would start to work on small choreography. Well, if you needed a laugh, you should have come to this class because watching us go across the floor doing techniques that some people had worked on for years and years was definitely a comical sight. I remember the PKs, which is just a nice word or technology used in ballet for spinning. I remember when we began to do spins across the floor, always feeling dizzy by the time I had made it across the floor. But then I learned something, something that proved to be a valuable technique called spotting. 
In ballet and in dance, spotting is what you do when you focus on something on the wall or in the room, and you keep your eyes focused on that, all the way up until the last moment when you make the turn. And as soon as you make the turn, you relocate that thing that you were looking on. The goal is that by spotting, by keeping your eye on that item, that object, it will help to ground you. It will help to keep you from getting dizzy. There's a lot happening in our world that could be just dizzying. I wake up in the night and unfortunately last night I had my laptop in the bed with me and opened it up and saw fire in Wendy's and learned that another black man had been shot in Atlanta in the drive-thru. Half awake and half asleep, I felt dizzying as I watched the fire burn down Wendy's. And I watched fire trucks stand back because they were afraid for their own safety. And so they allowed this Wendy's to burn to the ground. I saw police officers on the expressway and I saw protesters everywhere walking in the middle of the street. And I have to say, I felt a little bit dizzy. And here, there's a story emerging of a man who fell asleep in the drive-thru. Wendy's called the police. The police show up. There's some kind of tussle that happens. He has the taser. He's running. And he ends up dead. Again, I find myself dizzying. Yesterday, there was a kids' protest march, and I tried to go, but when I got there, my son declared to me that he was scared. I tried to alleviate his fear. This is going to be an easy kid protest, but I couldn't, because he, too, is experiencing this dizziness. He has looked at TV. He has seen the news. On the way home for the march that I went to that I didn't go to, <laughs> I saw several stores boarded up, Walmart and Mariano's. Even saw at one store people were outside with their paint painting on the cardboard. If nothing else happens in 2020, wow, we've gotten a lot of bang for our buck this year. All of this dizzying. I've seen police all over the city deploy three busloads here in Hyde Park. I go other places and there are police on standby trying to protect businesses. It feels just a bit dizzying, like I'm spinning and I'm spinning and I'm getting dizzy. I can imagine if I'm dizzy and perhaps my son is dizzy that maybe some of you are dizzying. We don't know the full weight of it all. And yet with all that's happening, we are looking at the scores of COVID in the South as they spike, and wondering if we too shall see impact from all the protests that has been going on across the United States. And then I remember the importance of spotting. It's important to keep your eyes on the prize, which has generally meant our faith. It's important to keep sight of what matters to God and therefore what matters to us. Last week, we got a glimpse as we looked at the creation text, and we saw all the living organisms that God created, including humans. I was listening to a scientist or reading an article from a scientist today that said it's amazing when we evolved to the point where we could walk on two legs because it freed us to do so many things with our hands. God paused after he had made all of creation, including humans, and he stepped back and said, this is good. In the words of Cardi B, I like it like that. <laughs> it's important to remember also the words of Micah, that what does God require of us as far as spotting to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with our God. Part of spotting is finding the good times in the bad times, finding the hopeful times in the COVID times to help to anchor us and keep us focused and keep us from getting dizzy or falling into despair 
or allowing anxiety and concern to carry us away. Today, I would like you to consider that laughter is good. Laughter is something that possibly helps to anchor us. It helps us when we are going through. In the biblical text today that you just heard, Sarah laughs. But wait a minute. Let's go back. Sarah was married to Abraham, and Abraham was that guy that God promised to be the father of many nations. So in 2020 terms, one could deduce that one would have to have at least one kid to be the father of many nations. And Abraham lived in a time where having a lot of kids was very common. But there was only one problem. Sarah, his wife, wasn't getting pregnant. She wasn't doing her job. And this was before fertility clinics that could help couples figure out what the problem was. And year after year passed and Sarah's body wasn't doing the job. You see, in this time period, women were known for the ability to have children. That was their role. This was what gained them prominence and now it was more than years, decades, had rolled by. And I can imagine for Sarah the dizziness going on, the weight of expectation, the desire to get pregnant and no babies. A friend of mine that I went to school with suffered from infertility problems. There is a sadness because even though there are a lot of kids to love, a lot of people just want something they call their own with their DNA. My friend went through years of testing and needles and treatment. Some men have left women because they were unable to have babies. And yet even here, Abraham gets a little help from the concubine, if you, you know, go over to the other chapter. And in the midst of it all, Sarah, who has prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed, still has no baby. And God says all she has to do is conceive. And she can't even do that. And so Sarah is dizzy. As she resigns herself that this just ain't going to happen for me. I'm not going to be a mother. And then these men appear. And they announce that Sarah will have a baby. And what does Sarah do? What would you do? She laughs. It's absurd at her age that she would be pregnant. So she laughs. You see, her laugh is connected to pain. Maya Angelou has tapped her pain in her poetic words. When I think about myself, I almost laugh myself to death. My life has been one big joke. A dance that's walked, a song that spoke. I laugh so hard I almost choke when I think about myself. If you've ever heard Maya Angelou perform this poem, and it is on YouTube, it's chilling. She's laughing, but somehow the laugh is not carefree. The laugh is not a laugh that you join in with. It is the laugh of someone who is holding it together, spotting and finding a way through the laughter. It is a laughter, says Maya, that is meant to keep one from crying, meant to keep one from losing one's mind, meant to help one cope. Sarah laughs like that. Really now? Really? Really, God? This is when you want to show up. She laughs because she's beyond ridicule about the fact that there's this promise that she's going to have a kid in her old age. Comedians do it all the time, which is why some of you love to watch Saturday Night Live. They connect to our pain and our struggle and our angst, and they paint against the backdrop of our political agony by drawing out the humor. They take what is heavy and they give us a different view and it brings laughter and we get it. 
Obama was good at being witty. He's even managed to do a little bit of wittiness now. There are some that are just good at this. They know how to make us laugh. We have a few even in our own congregation. A little bit of wittiness, sense of humor. We know how to bring that laughter out. There's this four-year-old soccer team. Now, if you ever want to laugh or you need a laugh, you should go watch little kids play sports, honestly. You would laugh. But anyway, there's this soccer team of four-year-olds, and anyway, they have four quarters of four quadrants. You get my point. And after two, they switch sides. So if the team A was trying to get to goal B at quarter three, they switch sides, and they're trying to get over to this side. And so the game begins, and the Red Hawks are revving, and there's this one kid that hasn't been able to get the ball. But at this moment, he's able to get the ball, and he starts traveling, and he's feeling good, and he's getting a little further away from the kids. And the parents are yelling on the team of this kid, you're going in the wrong direction. He doesn't know that that's why no one's chasing him. He's free. He's gone. And obviously he thinks all of the yelling of the parents is encouragement. And we're proud of him. And he scores. He scores a point for the other team. And you just got to laugh. We laugh sometimes in spite of ourselves. We laugh so that we don't take ourselves so seriously. We laugh because laughter is good for us. Every Wednesday, a small group of us get together on Zoom, and we try to tell jokes. Now, this is not Comedy Central. <laughs> this is not the Cartoon Station. This is not Revival. This is not Second City. But it is a few of us in this congregation who get together, and we laugh. We have told a lot of jokes, and some of them flew and a lot of them didn't. We've lamented too, but we have tried to uplift ourselves with laughter because we really don't know the end. And sometimes that can be dizzying. The future is uncertain. The country looks more and more alien each time I drive out. And so every Wednesday, a few of us come together in the absurdity of it all and we laugh like Sarah we find ourselves laughing. Plato says even the gods love jokes. So we tell jokes and we show kindness and compassion for each other. And we listen and we hope and we laugh and we pray. And that is all. It's good to laugh, but sometimes it's good to watch other people laugh. Have you ever seen that person laugh that really, really is good at laughing? They laugh so hard, you're not laughing at the joke, but you're laughing at them laugh. I know a couple of people like that, but when they laugh, they are so full. And you see it in their eyes. And you see how their lips expand. There's some people who so love their own jokes they laugh at their jokes even if nobody else is laughing. They are totally there. One of the things that I miss about open breakfast is the laughter. It seems like we, and I mean the patrons, I mean the volunteers, I mean the members, we did a lot of laughing at open breakfast. We worked hard, but it just seemed like open breakfast invited laughter. It was the best part of my job as pastor here at United Church of Hyde Park. No matter how hard we worked, there was always plenty of laughter. And when we left, it just felt so much better. I'm sure some of you feel that way about fellowship, so after service today, you can still join us for that coffee hour. Maybe you'll laugh, pontificate, have some discussion. I miss that. I miss the getting together of us. I'm sure some of you do. Laughter is important. Laughter brings lightness to the air. People can say things with humor that they can't say if they were serious. 
Laughter opens the door to possibility. We sing in this church, love lifted us, but if love lifted us, certainly laughter has carried us. Laughter has carried us over the hills and through the forest. Laughter picks us up. Laughter is good for us right now. So I want you to laugh. Find something to laugh about. Now we're not, we're a serious bunch of folks, so it might take a little bit of work, but you can laugh. We don't know where we're going and when we'll get there. So I encourage you to laugh on this journey. William Thackeray says, laughter is sunshine in the home. I think laughter is just sunshine, period. A Jewish proverb says, soap is to the body as laughter is to the soul. And in our very own proverbs, it says that laughter is medicine for the soul. Somebody else said cheap medicine. But it's medicine regardless of what your medical insurance is. Tomorrow is before us, but right now we have today. We have today. And in the moment of today, we have possibilities of inviting laughter into our life. Let laughter anchor us and help us to focus on our faith and to be spotting, which is necessary for the unforeseeable future. And potentially, it can help us be less dizzy. So this wasn't in the text today, but if you go over a couple of chapters later, Sarah does get pregnant. And Sarah does have a baby. And Sarah laughs again. But this time the laughter is not so much so connected with pain. This laughter is a different kind of laughter. It's a laughter connected to joy and delight. And she laughs. And she laughs. And she concludes that even in her old age, that God saw fit to bring laughter to her life says, not only am I laughing, but you all go ahead and laugh with me. Laughter is good. Amen.